as you can see from the slide, I'm going to talk about some aspects of intercultural learning at home here in the Sheffield Business School. And I'm going to take as the example our uh, student support tutor scheme that we have been running in various forms for the last three, four years. My name is Gudrun Myers. I am the China lead for Sheffield Business School. This means I do all kinds of things relating to our recruitment partnership building in China, but I also uh, work a lot with the Chinese students who come to us to study here because we firmly believe that it's one thing recruiting the students and generating income, but we're in re into recruiting students from abroad, not just Chinese students, but international students, not just to make money. We want these students to become ambassadors for our business school, for the university, to go out to have a good experience, the best they can have, so that word of mouth helps us to uh, build on our reputation. So I have got this uh, slightly dual role. I have brought with me today, and they're going to introduce themselves in a, in a little while, six of our student support tutors who have worked on the scheme this year. And they're Hannah, Danielle, Rachel, Michael, Rebecca, and Pamela. And most of the talk is really going to be done by them because I wanted to make the focus of our presentation to be the student voice. So all I want to do at the beginning is tell you a little bit about the development of the Student Support Tutor Scheme, how it came about, how we operate it. As Krasi has said, we have lots of materials on this particular website, which is Intercultural Skills for Employability, and there's the whole history of the development of the scheme is on there, together with evaluations that we do every year, the changes we make, the new elements that we add into it. So. Uh, I think I've said everything there is to say about the first slide. I just want to give you a quick overview over how we're going to run through the different elements. Right at the beginning, I want to say something about our assumptions. When we started the scheme, we made certain assumptions about how intercultural development might work. So I'm going to talk about those a little bit. Then I'll concentrate on the development of our scheme and then I will hand over to our students who have prepared their own presentation. Um, in their presentation, they're going to talk about how they worked with uh, our internet. Oh, sorry, I'm getting a signal here. I've forgotten this as well. Okay, so I'm going to, sorry, yes, our students are going to talk about a number of aspects first one is how they work with the Chinese students, i.e. international students, but the majority of the students that they work with are actually Chinese. They will also say something about what they themselves have learned through the interaction. And these students are also the very lucky and hard-working ones who through their work and through a selection process, which was quite rigorous, earned themselves a place on a trip to China, which we did over Easter working with uh, prospective students from partner institutions out there. So they're going to talk about what they have learned there, what they experienced, and then they're also going to talk about how we might use that experience to engage with students back here. Because that's one of the things I wanted to ask them. What did they think after having worked, having been to China? What is it? What advice can they give us? So that's mainly what their presentation is going to be about. Then we've left space for a discussion and questions and then right at the end I ju just have a few questions for reflection to which I don't have the answers wholly but which maybe might uh, get us to think about things uh, a little bit further. So those were the f second slide. Okay, here are my assumptions. I have to say that my background, my academic background is languages and you will find that that goes through the whole talk and the whole presentation. Because I'm in my background is in languages, I am also very interested in cultures. I find people, their development, and different culture one of the most exciting and fascinating things that you can study and work in. So, but before we get to that one, here are some of the assumptions. Some may be proven, others may not be. So one, 
assumption for me, and I think it's been mentioned before, is you can sit as many nationalities, co-locate them in a seminar or in a lecture, that does not mean that they will develop intercultural skills because they might just sit there and a lot of them do it, not speak to each other, etc. So it doesn't happen automatically. Also meaningful intercultural experiences and learning only happen through people. People have to talk to each other, they have to engage with each other in some way. It could be through joint academic activities, professional activities, personal activities. But there has to be something that they do together to come together and do. The other thing is each individual will experience this differently. It's going to be a different process for everybody. Some may want to just throw themselves into the experience. Some are a bit more careful. Some may just do certain parts of it. So again, it's a very individual process. It's a psychological process because suddenly you're confronted with differences. Other people are doing things in a different way. I don't quite understand. What does that mean? So there's a self-questioning in this and that can be quite worrying at times when you don't understand what is going on and how you should react. So it's psychological and you do not learn it by being told it. So we can talk about this for hours and hours. It is something you have to do and go through. What we do know is that People who've had previous international experience, and we heard it on one of the clips that Viv showed. Well, I went to this country, so when I went to the other one, I was already prepared that it's going to be different, that things might happen in a different way to what I'm used to. So that helps. I also strongly believe that when you have encounters, initial account encounters, there has to be some structure to the activity. There has to be some scaffolding, some support, because people don't immediately know how to relate to each other, what form of discourse to, to adopt. And within that, you then have the opportunity for these people to gain confidence and to develop freer and more autonomous relationships with each other. But, and we've learned this through our Student Support Tutor Scheme, there have to be other sub support mechanisms as well. So we monitor, we are there, you know, at a distance if, there, if help is needed because human relationships can go wrong. If they didn't, nobody would get divorced. Yeah? One example. <laughs> or if we all got on and just loved each other, then anybody could marry anybody. Not true. Relationships have to develop. So. These are some of the assumptions that, for me, hold true. And this is what uh, a lot of the things that we, we do are based on. So, for the next part, I just want to give you a very quick overview of how we've gone from the first step, which is a tandem method approach, which is firmly based in language teaching and learning. This is where a speaker of one language is paired with a speaker of another language started in the 1980s, big movement, and these two work together. That can be face-to-face, -face, it can be online, it can be via email, there's different ways. But they have structured activities at different levels of language competence, and they exchange information and they build relationships. So that's where I was coming from and my colleagues were coming from, because in the languages department, in the languages subject group, these are activities that we naturally engage in. We did find, however, because there's Italian students coming in, they speak with the Italian students who are learning Italian here and so on, we found that the Chinese students were not engaging in this process automatically. They weren't signing up. So some years ago we managed to um, secure <coughs> some funding from one of the settles that were at the university here, which is the settle for the promotion of learner autonomy, and we ran a project on which was specifically a tandem between UK students and Chinese students. We learned an awful lot from that. And then when some two years later, we found that we had a sudden increase in the numbers of level six top-up students coming from China, whom we knew we had to support in their skills development, we implemented and uh, put in place a Saturday program 
with a non-credit bearing module. It was a structured module. It was there to support the students' development, their integration into their courses at, uh, in the business school. So we implemented that and again learned an awful lot more. It ran over semester one. We had 10 sessions in total. They were on a Saturday, which was not universally uh, loved by anybody, mm -hmm. not by the tutors who were involved in this, not by the international students and not by the UK students. However, we did it. The way it was structured was one lecture <coughs> by an academic, and this could, it could be on how to do a good presentation, it could be on how to do group work, it could be on referencing. This was then followed by a two-hour seminar delivered by student support tutors. Student support tutors um, who had been trained in the various aspects and who worked with us alongside this. We also, because it was a Saturday and we were well, well supported, and I have to stress that because that is another aspect that came up earlier this morning, support from your faculty, support from your university. We could not have run any of these things without support from the business school, from uh, the executive team and from the head of uh, international. Because you need to have that support, you need to have the resources behind you so that you can actually put something in place. So we have been very, very lucky in that we have been supported throughout. So anyway, we had this work on a Saturday, we evaluated and found that both student groups got an awful lot out of this interaction. Not everything was perfect, so we were improving year on year, certain things didn't work, others worked, so we worked alongside and we realised that both sides were, as I said, getting a lot out of it. We didn't like the fact that it was a Saturday, we didn't like the fact that it wasn't accredited, and again, through support, from the faculty and many colleagues, we validated a credit-bearing module, which is now firmly part of the, some of the level six international top-up routes, which includes the module that is uh, listed as the fourth uh, part here. It's called professional studies. This is now quite a differentiated module where the first semester is co-taught by academics, academic staff and student support tutors. There's a structured program for both and the student support tutor program follows what the staff do. The student support tutors have a role akin, similar to what a foreign language assistant does, with the difference that they are in the country rather than preparing students to go out into the foreign country. So they will tell you a little bit more. I don't want to uh, steal their thunder because they're going to tell you what they have been doing. But at the moment, I'll just say it's a little bit like a foreign language assistant. They don't assess the students. So they don't work uh, on assessed pieces of work. They support the skills development. Okay. This module then in semester two takes on employability. And we send our international students on company visits. So they all go on a company visit and they're accompanied by the student support tutors who also, also help prepare them for this. So that's a, an, another element of this particular module where we try to integrate the students. There's a third element which is then outward facing company events, international company events. And again, the student support tutors work with their international students on preparing those events to which we invite companies from outside. And especially those companies who have granted us a visit to see how their company works. So this year we've had uh, three events. One was an ice club event that Crassi organized for us. Then we had another event which was a Dragon's Den event where the Chinese students worked with their support tutors and presented products and services that don't, don't exist in the UK but exist in China and that could be marketed here. That was hugely successful. We had 120 students all together presenting in front of business people and we had a sort of Dragon's Den assessment type um, event and uh, we had winners as well. 
and the, the event during Chinese New Year, somebody was asking, isn't there a clash of things you do? Our Chinese New Year event was Chinese students presenting their home province to organizations and companies outside. So were, students worked in groups, again, with their student support tutor, and there was uh, Shanghai, I think they won it. We had Guangdong, Anhui, lo lots of provinces, and they were presenting their provinces. So those are the kinds of things they're doing. I hope I've probably told you what they're telling, what the students are going to tell you as well in a little while. But this, in a very quick way, is charting the progress. There's loads more to it. I'm sure you will have questions, uh, which hopefully we can sort of answer during the the discussion. Right. I want to hand over to the students now. Uh, they're going to come up here and talk to you. As I said, they've only just come back from a trip to China where I was immensely proud of them and where they behaved in a very professional way and I would go on any trip with them anywhere as long as they took me with them. So <laughs> there we go. <laughs> if you'd like to come up, I'll just sort out, we'll try to sort out the... Um, Hang on, it's down. Yeah. Who is going to speak first? It's me. Is it you? Okay. Right. So whoever's talking needs to have. Okay. Oh, sorry. Hello. I think um, as Gudjan's showed our names, we'll quickly go through, tell you a little bit about ourselves, what our name is and what course we study at SBS before we start the presentation. Um, so my name's Danielle Fowler and I study languages and international business, which the languages are French and German. Uh, I'm Michael Jennison, I study uh, business and enterprise management. Um, I'm Pamela Roberts and I study business and marketing. <coughs> uh, I'm Rebecca Jerome and I study events management. I'm Rachel Graham and I study business and financial management. Okay, um, so the presentation that we've um, prepared for you today um, outlines our role as international student support tutors um, and also the purpose of the trip and things, as I'm sure we'll all tell you in a second. Um, I'm going to start by outlining what we actually do. Um, so we deliver in pairs um, to a group of around 20 students and these seminars are held every week for an hour and a half. Um, as part of the lessons, these are, these are the things that we will cover. Um, we had discussions on cultural differences between, um, between the UK and between the, the culture of the country that our students come from, which isn't always China, but, may, but is on the majority of the cases. Um, we also encourage them to work as a team because that is something that in a lot of cultures, particularly in the, in the educational system, they're not used to. Um, and again, motivating them to have discussions as a group um, and debating. I know that particularly in Hannah's class, she held a lot of, of debate-style activities. Um, prepare them for the presentations, for example, as Gudrun said, to prepare them for this Dragon's Den event that they had. Um, we focused on their presentational skills, their communication skills, um, actually how to make a PowerPoint appeal to an audience as well, um, and again taught them about business etiquette, which would also be useful if they were to be successful in getting a job in the UK after their studies here. Um, we helped to lead and promote discussions on current affairs in the UK um, and celebrations and commemorations that we have that are perhaps different to those that they would have at home. I know, for example, I helped um, help them understand a little bit more the reason that we wear the poppy in November, um, and they actually found that quite engaging and interesting, learning about a side of the culture that isn't anything really to, to do with their studies, but does help them further integrate into our society. Um, we also help to explain the university processes, for example, writing their coursework as whether it's uh, an essay or a report, which format to use, how to use Harvard referencing, um, which is hard enough for home students, I think I can speak for all of us, to understand, um, let alone for international students who've never had to use this kind of format before. Um, we've had to stimulate real-life scenarios for them, particularly with, um, in the second semester, helping them prepare for job applications, um, had sort of speed dating style interview sessions where they've had to sort of talk about um, the skills that they've got and share their experiences um, with their fellow students, which has also helped them bond closer as a group, I think, as well. 
Oh, and also we talked about the CVs there as well, we slapped it out. Um, we've also organised and ran events for them, not only the, um, not only the events that um, are organised by the university, but on a, in our own little groups as well. Um, for example, I know that Michael took his students um, ice skating. I took mine to see Cinderella at the pantomime because I knew that was something that is typically British. Um, and again, it's something that they wouldn't have experienced before. Um, as Gudrun mentioned, we accompanied our students on company visits, um, which was quite nice um, to see also for us to see what local businesses have to offer, not only to international students, but to home students as well. Um, and we prepared them for the joint international business events, such as the Dragon's Den event, and for um, the Chinese New Year event, where, <coughs> sorry, where it was also, I think, more of an educational purpose for local employers as well, who actually see what our international students have to offer to them. Um, so yeah, to, uh, to end my, my part of the presentation, I'm going to talk about our role where we're not only an international student support tutor in its name, we're their teacher because we hold these events, these seminars every week. We're also fellow students, um, as quite a lot of them are in our lessons, uh, seminars and lectures, so we get to know them on that level. We're an advisor on a level that we can help them with, if they're having issues, for example, one of my students had an issue with her visa application, and it was a, a misunderstanding between what she was saying and what she was getting on the other end of the phone. So I was the middleman in, in helping calm her down, actually explain that there was nothing to worry about, um, and to help them understand that she wasn't being a pest, she was actually really genuinely concerned. Um, we're an, an events manager, which, as I've explained, we organise events for them. Um, we're a counsellor, if they ever need us, they're hundreds and thousands of miles away from home. It's, you know, obvious that they're going to get upset sometimes and need someone to confide in. Um, and we're kind of that link between uh, a teacher um, and a, a co-student. And at the end of it, we are their friend. We're there to support them throughout everything that they're going through. <laughs> Is that all right like that? <laughs> um, so through our role as student support officer, tutor, we, we really have learnt a lot about our students and it's been really rewarding to see how they've developed throughout the course of the year. Uh, interestingly, at the very beginning, uh, they were quite confused about our style of learning here at Sheffield Hallam because it is quite different to how they learn. Um, for example, our seminars are really quite active, we have a lot of group work uh, and discussions between each other, so tutors really do encourage students to like, express their own opinion, whereas in China it seems to be a lot more based on the tutor talking for the lesson and students writing notes throughout the lesson. So at the start, um, when we tried to arrange things like icebreakers to get to know each other, they were quite confused as to why we wanted them to move from this seat into different positions to do things like speed dating, as Danielle mentioned before. Um, so that was an interesting challenge. Um, another thing that they found quite unusual was the fact that our support lessons were led by fellow students uh, because they kind of didn't understand that in this case we had like a higher authority over them even though we were the same as them, we were students as well. Uh, we noticed a clear difference between the level 5 and the level 6 students. The level 6 students did seem a lot more engaged and enthusiastic about our lessons and we feel like this is because they were studying the professional studies module that Gudrun mentioned before and this was an assessed module so everything that we did with them what helped towards what they were doing in their professional studies module so they really felt like they gained something out of our classes and really appreciated our help. Whereas with the level five lessons, um, the international development course, this was kind of everyday things that weren't necessarily always in line with their actual degree. So they didn't always see the importance of what we were doing with them. Um, social trips and SBS events were probably the most successful thing of the programme. 
social trips that they did with the student support tutors were really interesting for them. It was a great chance to get to know us even more outside of the classroom. It was a great chance to practice their English and uh, get to know other English people if we brought <coughs> other English people along. And obviously it was a great way for them to see um, other parts of the UK and different cultural aspects. Uh, the SBS events really brought them a lot of confidence because they were able to show off like all the skills that they've learned here and they were praised by everyone that came to the events on their success so it was really rewarding for them. Um, as I mentioned before they found it strange at first to have these supports lessons with fellow students however they did warm to us very quickly and I would say that we had a really strong bond with the students uh, within a few weeks and it was really nice to feel like they could put their trust in us and that if they did have a problem they really could come to us and we felt like they really did enjoy our lessons. Um, interactive activities, once they got used to the idea of more group work and team building, really did go down well and I think that they did enjoy this more so than us just discussing something with them for the lesson. Uh, for example, debates went down really well, uh, they seemed to really get into expressing their opinion on a certain topic. Uh, group work such as uh, making posters in little groups and then presenting to the rest of the class uh, they really seem to enjoy this and team building exercises such as paper tower building and things that really got them competitive it was really interesting to see how much they got involved especially when prizes were given they really really got into it <laughs> Um, one thing we would say is that they, they could have utilised the lessons with us a bit more we did often badger them for advice on what they wanted to learn with us because we stressed that the whole point of our lessons was to tailor our time with them to their development needs. For example, if they struggled with uh, presentation skills and wanted to focus solely on presentation skills, or if they struggled with particular vocab in their lessons, did they want us to go through vocab and things like that. Um, so we really had to kind of remind them every lesson, look, we will do whatever you want us to do with you. Um, towards the end, they did kind of um, approach us more with their own personal like, development needs, but collectively as a class, it was very much we'd have to do like a reflection at the end of each class, oh, how did you find this? Uh, if you enjoyed it, do you want to do this more? If you didn't enjoy it, why not? What would you rather do? So it was the having to push them to get their opinion as to what we should do with them. Um, so the purpose of our trip um, is what I'm going to talk to you about today. Um, our main purpose was to promote uh, Sheffield Business School. Um, to do this, um, we, were, we visited two schools in um, uh, Shanghai and uh, Zhuhai. It gives a great opportunity to strengthen our partnerships over there and um, with the staff and the students. Um, we got a great chance to gain an insight into how the students actually learn um, and their lifestyles and backgrounds. Um, we did this by being present in their lectures and um, classes, um, which was really great. We also got the opportunity to stay on, in student accommodation and we had um, uh, our own students from the schools that used to look after us and take us around, we got to eat in the canteens, we got a really good sense of what the life is like. Um, from this we got a great opportunity to induce, introduce the students to UK culture and learning style. Um, we got the chance to organise events that students could attend and um, we also got to run classes. Um, this gave the students opportunities um, to ask us any questions. Um, we had cards that um, prompted them on asking questions about accommodation, food, culture, um, all sorts of things that they would experience when they came here. Um, this was really great as um, it gave the opportunity for the students to actually get a view from real students, not from their teachers, not from academics, from like from people who have actually experienced it. Um, so we got it was a great opportunity for us to share our own experiences with them. Um, the other things we did was um, we had competitions um, which we gave out prizes from the school. Um, we, they could challenge us, we had a chopstick challenge, um, so gave the students a chance to teach us something, um, which was a lot of fun as well. Um, 
through getting involved with the students, it gave us a chance to clear up any queries that they might have for studying in the UK. Um, as I said before, we had cards about different topics that prompted them to ask questions, um, but through this, um, they came up with their own questions and they were really engaged in learning about what life was like studying um, abroad. Um, so, finally, to sum, up, sum everything up, we, um, through this we got to understand um, where the students were coming from and it also identified any um, queries and like, challenges that they might um, experience coming over here um, through things that they'd said and also things we'd picked up on, um, which gave us a great opportunity to um, think about ways that we could overcome these challenges um, and develop things that are already here in the school which would make the challenges less um, difficult for the students when they do come to Sheffield Business School. Thank you. Uh, just one, one point here. I mean, um, Rebecca's been telling you the things that they have done. I just want to mention that before we went, these six students <coughs> put together a curriculum of activities that we dipped into. So they, they did the curriculum development <coughs> on their first semester of work that they've done with the students here, and which we could adapt very flexibly. They also produced a video, which is just absolutely amazing, which we showed at the <coughs> various universities that we went to. So they showed a lot of creativity and enterprise that I was really quite surprised at and, and really impressed. Okay, so I'm going to give you uh, a brief sort of illustration and overview of the, uh, the trip um, so that you can illustrate some of the points in, in your head, um, the, the experience that we had. Um, so we woke up on the morning for the flight and we had little hope of actually getting to China. Um, <laughs> we dumped the load of snow. Um, actually, when we got to, the taxi driver wouldn't come. The taxi driver that came to mine waited at the end of the road, so I slid down the road with my suitcase. Um, but actually, when we got to Manchester on the train, uh, there was no snow at all, so we were really lucky. Um, we had about probably about a 15-hour journey, um, a mad rush, uh, changing flights in Amsterdam. We had about an hour to get from one point to the other. Um, and then we finally arrived in uh, Shanghai. Uh, we were welcomed by Rico. Uh, well recognised in his Sheffield Hallam hoodie, um, <laughs> so we were able to spot him, um, who took us for a little tour around the airport before we found the, uh, <laughs> before we found the taxi. Um, so we, we got on the taxi uh, on our way to Shanghai, he gave us a very quick summary of Shanghai, some history and things which was really helpful, uh, looked after us very well, uh, was very welcoming um, and immediately uh, through the students in the deep end, uh, took us out for a. I, tr I tr asked the students how to describe this place. It was a kind of a, a the back of a cafe, maybe restaurant. It's like a, all the all the restaurants sort of split off into rooms, so we had our own little room. Uh, immediately practicing our chopstick skills or learning our chopstick skills. Um, had some duck, um, and we just sort of thrown in. Um, he taught us a bit about table etiquette and things like that, which we found really interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, and then we had a much needed nap afterwards uh, before we uh, went out um, for our first... Oh, sorry, yeah. The, so the sign of British College, um, that's, uh, sorry, Rico is the uh, Sheffield Hallam representative uh, who works over in the office in Shanghai. Um, and a former international student with us. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the sign of British College is in the French Quarter of Shanghai. Uh, as you can see, it's got quite a lot of European influences, um, and uh, here's one of the main older buildings, um, I think this is the library, um, and yeah, so after the nap we were taken for a meal, uh, we went for a meal just uh, outside of the school, um, again, uh, sort of thrown into eating over there is very different, um, everything shared in the middle. Um, I think we tried a bit of frog that night, we weren't too adventurous, but um, so we had a taste of that. Um, then that night we got the underground to, um, to more central Shanghai, uh, went to see the Bund um, and take some pictures there. So uh, I don't know if anyone's been to Shanghai, but on one side of the Bund you've got the old, uh, all the colonial buildings. Um, 
And on the other side, you've got uh, Pudong, which is all the new skyscrapers. So we took loads of pictures there. Um, had a walk along. Uh, we went round the Peace Hotel, which is a really nice, uh, typical like 1920s, 30s uh, Art Deco building, which is like stepping back in time. It's really strange. Um, that was interesting. And then the next day, we were welcomed in the morning by breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've forgotten what these were called. They did have a special name, but they were like dumplings with uh, meat or veg inside. Um, they were warm, uh, really tasty, and then we had uh, hot soy milk with them as well. So that was really did sort of different to a typical Weetabix or toast <laughs> and a cup of tea. So. Um, we were then introduced to the Sino British College. Um, we had a meeting um, with the principal and some of the academics there. Um, who gave us uh, sort of a brief overview, um, told us some of the opportunities that we, we could have out there, um, and then we were taking around some lectures and classes. So we actually sat in their classes and experienced uh, their their way their way of learning, uh, which was really interesting. Their lectures are much more um, sort of two way. Um, the teachers constantly asking them questions, making sure that they're listening. Basically, it's very much going back to sort of the way we're taught at the sort of GCSE A level, where you sort of ask a lot um, to, to make sure you're actually listening. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, we went around, uh, it was just lectures uh, to begin with there, um, and then we had lunch in the canteen. So we experienced how, uh, where they eat at, at school um, and the foods that they have. I was actually, I actually really enjoyed the canteens. Um, they were really, there's a lot on offer, really good value for money, and you know, it's, it's different. Um, the students there were, well, I think they got a bit bored of it by the end, but, um, <laughs> but I really enjoyed it. So, uh, <laughs> so then we went uh, around a couple more lectures, um, and then we did the um, Sheffield Business School. We did a tea house event with them, where we were given um, the use of the tea house that they have there. Uh, they provided refreshments, and we did activities with them. Uh, we had sort of two sides. I think we've already talked about the sort of challenges and activities that we did with them. Um, but also we did like a Q&A session about um, studying in Sheffield, uh, Sheffield Business School uh, and also just studying abroad in the Western culture and how, it changed, how it's different to there. So we were getting feedback from them as well as obviously um, giving something back to them as well. Um, uh, we invited all the students out to, for, to take us round. Um, the very dedicated students, so we had one student take us out. Um, we went down uh, Nanjing Road, so I think the, the period that we went was obviously very busy for exams and things, and they had other, other commitments. Um, so unfortunately, we didn't get any one student. Um, but it was a very enjoyable evening. Um, Nanjing Road is the shopping district, it's a very busy road um, in Shanghai. Um, so we took some pictures there, uh, went to some food, and Oh, we got, I'll show you that at the end, I don't think that's going to work. Just try. No. Okay, uh, I'll show you a video at the end. Um, so the, the girls got involved with some dancing on the street <laughs> <laughs> in Nanjing Road. Um, yeah, it's not to be missed, so I'll show you that at the end. Um, so the next day we got up early, we got the bullet train to Suzhou. Um, Rico wanted to show us a different side to Chinese culture. Uh, the more traditional um, areas, uh, architecture and, and history and things like that. Um, and Suzhou is a, a protected area by the government, um, away from sort of skyscrapers and things like that. So it's really nice to see that, that side of uh, Chinese culture um, and experience that. We went around the museum, which is where that picture is taken there. Um, and this is the... Humble, uh, humble Administrator's <laughs> Gardens, yeah. The Humble Administrator's Gardens. Um, in Suja. Um, sorry? Spring. Yeah, it was, it, the we <laughs> yeah, we had, it was really strange. We had like mixed weather, so like we didn't really know what to pack. And they said, we, before we'd went, it was like t between 25 and 30 degrees. Whereas um, that night at the Bund, it was quite really cold. <laughs> it was probably about 5 degrees or something. Um, and then one day whilst we were there, I think it was the day before that, uh, in the afternoon, we had a really bright spell of sun, and it got really warm, so that the temperature variants were, were crazy <laughs> and really sort of difficult to dress for. So, um, yeah, that was the uh, the gardens. 
Um, sorry. Uh, we had uh, Rico took us out for noodles um, uh, in CJ, and that evening we went. Uh, we got back on the bullet train and uh, were taken out by Sinai British College um, to a traditional sort of British banquet. Um, so we were introduced to how um, perhaps they do business over there and how they um, sort of network with clients and, and do business. So we had a lot of food, uh, a lot of different food um, that we weren't used to. And we've sort of put into practice all the things that Rico had taught us about um, etiquette and, and table manners and, and traditions and things like that, uh, which is really, really fun. So um, that was very really good. Um, the, then on, so that was Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday morning we got the uh, maglev train to uh, Pudong Airport, uh, ready to get the plane to Juhai, so we had to say bye to Rico, um, and all the, the staff at, uh, and students at Sina British College. Um, we had some Western food at the airport, which was a nice relief. Um, well, as much as we did enjoy, enjoy Chinese food, it was nice to sort of take a break. Um, actually know what you were eating and, uh, at the airport, which was really good. So um, We um, had a mad, mad rush to the plane, um, but actually we got there and we didn't have rushed, so we all sort of collapsed on the floor. Um, uh, we got the plane to uh, Juhai and it was delayed for five hours on the runway, so we waited for five hours there. And when we got there, the, the taxi driver had actually waited for us for five hours. And as we tried to apologise, um, and he didn't really accept any apologies from us. He was saying, "Now it, it was his honour to sort of wait for us and things like that," uh, and very understanding, um, which was quite. It, obviously, it's very nice, but it's also quite, you know, interesting as well. Um, so uh, yeah, we got to uh, the Ritz College eventually in the taxi. Um, it was we were at top floor. Um, very different to the student accommodation here. I don't think anybody has palm trees in the student accommodation. Um, and it's a very rural area. Um, so uh, there wasn't much around there. So it was quite a long taxi or bus journey into the uh, into main, uh, the city centre of Juhai, um, which is also quite interesting. Um, they had the school canteen, and I think the students, that's all they had. So. As much as, again, we really enjoyed the canteen, they were sort of sick of it because it's the only option. They, they, they don't have cooking uh, facilities in their uh, accommodation either. Um, so again, that's something that we've learned, you know, that, that they're going to have that's completely different here. Um, so uh, we met, sorry, Peter and Kathy, which are students there as well. Um, they looked after us really, really well again. Um, and uh, sorry, the night before that we had a meal uh, with Intern China. Um, or as uh, students, <coughs> what was his name again? Philippe. Philippe, yeah, and sorry. Another alumni of ours who is now working for a company in China. Yeah, uh, Philip Tews, and I think it was, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, yeah, an old uh, ex Harlem student that's over there working for the Intern China uh, offers intern opportunities to, for placement students, or if you want to do an intern uh, in China. Uh, so that was very interesting as well. Um, so we had <coughs> breakfast in the canteen, uh, again a very different breakfast, uh, we're helping through with classes throughout the day, um, again promoting Sheffield Business School, um, doing sort of trying to do the different activity, more interactive activities that we do here and introducing them to the style of learning that we have here. Um, we went for a traditional Cantonese lunch with the staff there um, and later on that Thursday we went to the market. Um, and again, Peter and Kathy really looked after us. They were actually watching from behind just to check that nobody was nicking stuff out of bags and things like that. They just thought of every single thing possible. Right, they went so far out of the way to look after us, which again was really interesting. And maybe that's maybe what they expect when they come here. You know, they, they maybe they want looking after a little bit. Certainly for the first few weeks or so. Um, so we learnt that. Um, then that Thursday evening, uh, we went out for. So it's an another picture of the class. <laughs> Um, then the Thursday evening we went out for uh, street food. Um, it's, that was take, we were taken uh, by the students from Intern China there. I think they went there quite regularly. Uh, but it was kind of like a dark alley, back street, <laughs> <laughs> um, upside down bin lid cooking kind of job thing. <laughs> um, but it was really, really tasty food. Um, obviously very cheap as well. Um, 
and that was a great experience as well. I sort of pulled up little kids' stalls and yeah, <laughs> it was good. So that evening we went for KTV, which is what all the students rave about here, which is it's karaoke, but you um, you have your own room and people drink, bring you drinks and food all the time. You just have a big group of friends. Whereas here we have karaoke and we sing to everybody. Uh, and usually in a group there, it's just individuals usually sing and it's um, in a close group of friends, you have your own room and things. Um, so we kind of started to understand, because they came over here, they were talking about KTV, or they were confused by our karaoke, and I don't think we sort of got an understanding of what it actually was, but going there we really, really enjoyed it, um, and kind of miss it, I think. <laughs> we're, we're desperately trying to find some KTV in the UK. <laughs> so, um, so the next day we had a uh, similar day on the Friday, um, so we did classes again, um, and oh, we also did a similar Q&A session as we did um, in Shanghai, where we showed the video that we prepared um, and um, just talked, about, just did a Q&A session on Sheffield Business School, studying in the UK and things like that. Uh, we had lunch in the canteen. We discovered a smoothie bar um, that was that did 50p smoothies that were really, really good. Um, and we found out that you could get them delivered to your room. And we were like, oh, how much, does, how much extra is that? And it was, it was still 50p <laughs> delivered to your, door, uh, to your dorm room. So we kind of missed out on that. But I don't think you can buy a mango here for 50p. So that was really good. Um, and then that evening, we were taken out um, by uh, Harry the Dean and Andrew, uh, which is he's the English teaching. Uh, head of English teaching uh, over at Ritz College, um, which again was West, uh, a bit of Western food, so that was a nice relief. Um, and also, it was really interesting that Harry he's, he takes a very different approach to uh, to the normal dean of a school. He's very down to earth. Uh, the students clearly had a lot of respect for him and um, and saw him as more on the same level. Um, which was really interesting. They were all sort of playing. So a lot of the students came out with us. They were playing darts and snooker together and things like that. Obviously, getting involved with some music as well. Um, and then that evening, we did have KTV again. <laughs> so, um, and then the Saturday, we got the ferry across to Hong Kong um, uh, fairly early. Um, we went out to the shopping district in Shim Sha Shui in Hong Kong and had some food. Um, did all our souvenirs and shopping because we were so busy in China that we didn't really have time to uh, do any shopping so we went to the market and did all that. Um, the next morning we said bye to Gudrun. <laughs> she was off to uh, Beijing and we spent, we went to the Buddha to see sort of more rural areas of Hong Kong. Um, so we did that. Attempted the peak but unfortunately it was very foggy uh, and then flew home. So hopefully that will give you a sort of an illustration of what we did and some of the pictures and things to illustrate what everybody else is talking about now. Okay, so I'll kind of give you an overview of what we learnt. Oh, yeah, this one as well. <laughs> okay, um, so as you can probably imagine, we've kind of stuffed quite a lot of things to do in such a short space of time, um, as we were like only there for a week. Um, so first of all, if we start um, in terms of the kind of overall learning from the students, we found that like the students have a full day of lessons. So whereas here they would have um, just a few sessions in a day and then perhaps have some spare time for kind of um, independent learning, the students in China have a set timetable that would probably be like from nine till five, where they will do set lessons and learn specific material that would prepare them for their um, exams, etc. Um, the lectures that they took were quite interactive, as Michael kind of said. They were like like what we kind of experienced in um, high school. They were like being spoken to, but you're, they were quite often checking whether the students understood what was going on and whether they knew like what what the material was. Um, and also made sure they were paying attention to what was going on. I think that might be quite a problem in China. Um, we found the learning was quite guided, so they were always told what they had to do and not necessarily spoon fed, but they kind of depended on the tutor to tell them what to do um, for the work and how to prepare themselves for the exams. Um, in terms of their lifestyle there, the students all lived on campus, so 
um, as we experienced in Juhai, we lived there and it was only about a two minute walk to the actual main building. So they are kind of constantly surrounded by the academic environment. Um, they seem to have quite little freedom, so they were very structured and focused on the kind of academic experience and they were quite restricted in what they could actually do. Um, for example, they, um, the students in Juhai had a curfew at 11pm and, and the security came round to the dormitories um, so just like to check that they're actually in. Um, they also had their internet access cut off um, at 11pm so they couldn't stay up.